So the purpose of this video is to show you how to use uh, two tools, both Doctopus and something called Gubric, in conjunction with Google Classroom to grade assignments using rubrics. There's quite a few steps, but I'll talk you through it as best I can. So first of all, you will notice that I have a Google Classroom open right now. This was a professional learning opportunity I did right before break. And I asked the students, which were actually teachers I was training, to write about what they were thankful for. Um, I just basically assigned a document to each um, teacher. I made a copy for each one of them. And I asked them just to tell me what they were thankful for this year. And so I had most of them, um, most of them are done. I have 27 turned in and two that are not. Um, and they're all living here in Classroom. And keep in mind, they also live in your Google Drive if you go to your Classroom folder. And then if you find your class, um, your class name and then you find your assignment, which was, what are you thankful for? They also live in my Google Drive right here. But I want to grade these with a rubric. So the first thing I need is a rubric, right? I went ahead and I cre went over to New and I created a new Google Sheet, which is like a spreadsheet and I made my rubric right in here. Now with Doctopus, for it to work, it has a couple of factors you have to consider. First of all, cell A1 has to be left blank. Your first row, row one, these are your point descriptors for each section of your rubric. Um, they have to be whole number values. You can't do partial points for this. Now you could grade students with partial points, like I could put them at a 2.5, um, when I'm grading them, but for the rubric itself, we have to go by whole point values. And then here are my categories, right? So I just made this up. This is not a beautiful rubric by any means. I was just kind of playing. But so I, I'm grading by relevance, structure, voice, and length. And then in between, you know, for relevance, you get a one if you don't cite an example. You get a four if you give multiple examples. So these are my descriptors um, for each component of that rubric. Okay, and I went ahead and titled it and made sure I labeled it rubric so when I try to find it later, it will be easy to find. So now I'm ready to attach this rubric basically to the student assignments. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go back to Drive. I need to click on New and create a new Google Sheet. I've already actually created one and I called this grading writing assignments. In real life, I'd probably title it with a little more information like what are you thankful for? so I know which assignment it is, but you do have to create this new spreadsheet to do this. Now I'm ready to use the add-on called Doctopus. If you don't have Doctopus, you'll see up here there's add-ons. If I come down, I can go to Get Add-ons, and then I can just search Doctopus. Although I will tell you, it's like one of the first ones here. It's a very popular extension. And this is an extension specifically for Google Sheets, which is like a Google spreadsheet. So I've already added it, so I'm going to go to Doctopus and do Open. It does have a bit of a load time. It all depends on, um, whoops, okay, so I might have an issue here. Let's see. If it's not going to work, no big deal. I'll just create a new sheet, and I'm not going to worry about titling it. That's fine. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll go to Add-ons. Once it's done loading, Doctopus launch. Okay, so Dr. Puss is going to wake up here, and it may take a minute or two. Okay, Dr. Puss has launched, so now um, for step one, it says I want Dr. Puss 2, and I'm going to select ingest a Google Classroom assignment. That's what we're going to use this for. And then it's going to kind of pry into my Google Classroom and say, okay, pick which class this came from. You can see I'm a part of way too many classrooms, but this is the one I used. And then I'll select the assignment, which was called, What Are You Thankful For? And now, after it, it's going to kind of go through all those files and think about it for a minute. So again, there's a little bit of load time when you first set this up. But once it's set up, it runs pretty smoothly. So I'll pause and wait till it's done loading. So that took about 30 seconds or so. And now it's saying that it had found two turned in files um, that I've already like turned back into the students. That's fine. It's okay. Um, so I can choose to just ingest those ones or ingest all of them. I'm going to do all of them. So I will do ingest assignment. And now it's actually going to look in that folder that lives in my Google Drive here. It's going to find all of these files and kind of dump them into the spreadsheet here. Whoops, let's go back here. I'll close my rubric because I don't need that right now. 
Okay, so again I paused and restarted because it took about 30 seconds and I don't want to waste your time. But you will see now what it's done is it's gotten all my stats. It's taken their Google addresses that are associated with it and it's told me the names of the people who turned it in. Um, the file key I'm not going to worry about. But here are links, so if I like want to see Tracy Baker's, all I have to do is click on this link here and it will open hers up right from here. We'll use this feature in just a little bit. And then it also tells me whether they turned it in or they didn't. So I have two people who have actually turned it in. It'll also tell me when they last edited it. And that's it right now, right? So now I need to attach that rubric that I made. If I look over to Doctopus right on top, I see attach Gubric. So I'm going to do that. And it's going to ask, which rubric do you want to do? Um, it'll look at ones I've used before. So the nice thing is if you're grading multiple classes, um, and I just used this rubric for a previous assignment, it'll show up here. However, I'm going to go to my drive, and I'm going to select a spreadsheet from my drive. And it's going to automatically search for spreadsheets. And I know I called it rubric, so I am going to just go ahead and type in the word. I think this is it right here, actually. But yeah, what are you thankful for, rubric? But I'm just going to type in the word rubric. Just so you can see, you can search by term. So what are you thankful for, rubric? There it is. And do select. And I'm going to attach it. And what it's basically going to do is it's going to attach this rubric to all these student documents. It's going to live right on that document. So when the student opens it, they're going to see the rubric. And after I grade it, they're going to see precisely how I scored it. So there we go. It's doing that. OK, so cool. Um, I can now, I, I don't really need to worry about Doctopus, so I'll close it. I can always open it back up later. And now I need to assess them, right? So here's the link that says Assess Document. I'm going to start at the top of my list. I'll start with Tracy. And it's going to pull open the document. And up here, this is Gubrick going on right here. Now, if this doesn't happen, you need to get Gubrick first. I kind of skipped a step there. To get Gubrick, what you have to do is you have to go to the Chrome Web Store. The way that I do that is I click on my apps waffle over here in Chrome. I go to Web Store, and I search for Gubrick. And if you don't have Gubrick ahead of time, when you're using Doctopus, it will prompt you to download it. I also included a link in the instructions. So this is Gubrick, and you click on that Add to Chrome button that'll be right over here, and it will live in here. And I know, whoops, that um, Gubrick um, is here because you'll see the little icon right here. OK, so here I am in Gubrick. Here's Tracy's paper, and she didn't write anything. So I'm going to score it. So first of all, um, it starts me on relevance. Now notice I could just click on one of my descriptors for this. So I could just do this. Or let's say I want to give her like a one and a half here. I want one and two. I can just type in 1.5. And if I go back to structure, you'll see it will highlight both of them. So it shows that she fell somewhere in between. So I'm going to keep giving her ones because she didn't um, really do this. And then notice I can leave written comments. So I could do, Tracy, I noticed you didn't complete this. Please complete. Um, I can also, if as I'm grading, I want to do kind of a narrative, I can actually record my voice, which is kind of wild. You have to give it permission to use your microphone. But if I click on this microphone, I'm going to leave her some feedback. Hey Tracy, I noticed that you haven't finished this assignment. Can you please work on it and then resubmit it to me so I can grade it? And what it does is it saves it as an MP3 file and it will ask where to save it. I just save it to my Google Drive because we have unlimited storage in our Google Drive, so why not put it there? It'll take a moment, but what will happen is for Tracy, in a second here, once I submit this, it's going to actually attach this rubric and this audio comment and my written comment to her document. So let's look. I'm going to click Submit. And now if I look at her document, there is the rubric. It says that I graded it. It shows where she fell in each domain here. And it also says, hey, there's a new audio comment. And if she clicks on it, it will take her to my feedback. Um, and whoops, I'm signed in as my personal one for some reason, but she should link to it right away. Some people have asked me, do they have like canned comments? So like if you had 
a comment you just wanted to plop in here, not type, can you do that? I haven't seen that feature yet. Um, I suppose you could always copy paste comments if you wanted, but I, I haven't seen that feature yet. So I'm done with Tracy's. I need to go to the next students. It would be really cumbersome to come back to the spreadsheet and click on the next one and then back and so on. So the cool thing about Gubrick is um, after I've submitted this, you'll see there's a next button. And this will take me to the next person on my list, which if I look back here should be Elaine Barbieri. So here is hers. And just like before, I can go through and I can give her a grade. And the nice thing is when you scroll down, this, this stays put so you don't lose it. So as you're going through, you know, you can read and pop back up here and do what you need to do. I'm going to leave comments. Amazing. And then submit. And I just kind of work my way through my, my class uh, assignments this way. So now, let's say I've only graded two, right? But if I go to here, I'm going to actually open Doctopus again. And I want it to show the feedback that I've left. So what I'm going to do is, let's see. Oh, actually, it already did it. I guess I don't need Doctopus open. My bad. So you'll see here it is. It notices my comments. I can you know, extend this if I want to see them a little bit better. Um, and people always ask, okay, so how does it grade for me, right? <laughs> it doesn't do this automatically, but don't sweat it. It's super easy to do. So you'll notice there's grade here, right? And generally the grade for my final rubric will be the sum of these um, point totals I gave her. So what I'm going to do is use just a really simple um, formula. I'm going to click here and I'm going to do equals sum and we want the sum of a series of number or cells. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to highlight these four cells and click enter. And you will notice now it gave me the sum of a 4.5 for this. Um, now if I want to you know, have this set up for all of these, all I have to do is take this since I have that formula set up, grab this little button drag her down for all of these guys and you'll notice these guys have sums of zeros because I haven't graded but notice then for Elaine's it summed up those um, fours to give me a 16. Now if you're a fan of formulas and spreadsheets you can do all kinds of stuff with this like um, obviously the highest point total was a 16 out of 16 so I could take this sum so it equals the sum of this I'll put this in parentheses so it's all one operation here so the sum of that divided by 16, that would give me like my decimal percentage, right? Let's see what happens here. So that gave me a one, but she actually has a hundred percent, right? So what I would do is then I would take that, actually order of operations should take care of that. So times 100 equals, and she has a hundred percent, right? And I could apply that formula up here. So she has a 28.125% and so on. So if you're comfortable with um, formulas, you can really play this around to get whatever kind of grade you want. Um, and, and usually if I'm trying to figure out what kind of formula I want to use, I'll just look it up online. Um, so, so then now that I have my grades here, let's say I got through all of these and had a big long list of grades, I could, um, you know, I could export this out to Power um, School or just print it out and manually transfer it. Unfortunately, this doesn't work directly with PowerSchool, but um, I do have a list of all my grades right here. So I know this. there were a lot of steps in this tutorial. I hope the written instructions that I have included also serve as a good guide. Um, if you guys have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to call me in. I'd love to help out, and I hope you found this useful.